Now for more on the Panama City Canal expansion, we're, doing, we're joined by Satish Jindal. He's an expert on global transportation and shipping. Mr. Jindal, welcome. My pleasure. It was a Chinese ship carrying more than 9,000 containers that entered the newly expanded locks. That will double the Panama Canal's capacity. Explain to us the impact that this will have on China's trade and on international shipping. You know, it's not going to increase the amount of trade that China will do is a lot of the larger ships that only could go to the West Coast, LA and Long Beach were the beneficiaries of it. Some of those ships that are bringing freight for the East Coast market will now be able to bring it around through the Panama Canal to the ports on the East Coast. So it's just going to make it a lot easier. Well, it's not necessarily a question of easier. It's a more direct all-water route as opposed to putting it on the rail and then on trucks from LA, Long Beach to bring it to New York market and Chicago and other places. There has been a lull in global shipping due to the drop in oil prices and economic slowdown in China, I'm sure you're aware of and other factors that have hit the waterways traffic and income. Tell us how the canal is going to offset the losses there. You know, the canal is going to be profitable for the Panamanians uh, because they only invested $5.4 in it. Uh, my concern is that the ports on the East Coast who are collectively spending $150 billion through 2020, uh, the country should really look at whether every port over here needs to have that capability and whether they will get a return on that investment of $150 billion. A lot of money. We anticipate increased commerce between Asia and ports on the East Coast, as we've been talking about. Are these ports, ports ready to handle these large, large vessels? Well, three of them are Baltimore, Charleston, and Miami. Uh, Savannah is still working at it. And the most important one is New York, New Jersey ports. And they rely upon that Bayonne Bridge uh, to be raised in order for the ship to come through. And that's another $2 billion plus investment that is going to take another two years or more uh, before the ships can come through to the New Jersey port, which is the largest on the East Coast. I see. Let's talk about the Suez Canal in Egypt recently lowered their tariffs by up to 65 percent on large container carriers trying to keep up the traffic. This canal cannot generate traffic, but will it encourage it? Yes, it will. And of course, it all comes down to economics of shipping and going through one canal versus the other. It also is a function of number of transit days, but transit days can be offset by the lower cost of the crossing on the canal. Uh, so Suez is interested in retaining the traffic, and they will, uh, through their pricing, will try and have some influence on it. But in that light, also, one should point out that the ports on the West Coast, LA and Long Beach, which are currently handling the traffic for the U.S. East Coast, they also have an opportunity to modify the pricing and the rails in order to try and keep the traffic on the route that they currently use. Satish Jindal, thank you so much for your time uh, joining us live from Dallas. We certainly appreciate it. My pleasure. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.